Okay, um, we're going to try and do something a little bit different. Um, and I've got Julian with me and we're going to talk a little bit about the golf course. Um, we're, we're into the fourth week of lockdown now, so things are, are slightly different. And, and the aim of, of this really is for you and I, a bit similar to what um, Simon and Bradley Dredge did, is just have a bit of an informal chat apart from the wine. We haven't got the wine uh, due, have we? Which is a bit of a shame. Um, no, <laughs> But the aim is to obviously yeah tell members a little bit more about what's going on on the golf course at the moment. Obviously, things have changed. What Julian's key focuses are, the challenges that we faced over the last four weeks, uh, and then we'll sort of give you a chance to get you to know Julian a little bit more. Um, some for some members, it'll probably be the first time they would have seen you, Ju. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. But uh, I mean, let's let's get straight into it. I mean, firstly, you know, do you, let's talk about your family. Uh, obviously, it's a difficult time at the moment. Everyone, everyone doing okay? Yeah, so everyone's fine. Um, Lara, my wife, has lost quite a bit of work. She's a journalist. She works from home. Um, she's lost quite a bit of work uh, for various reasons, but she's doing okay. Uh, my daughter's in the middle of a GCSE, so. She will be going on predictive grades, which personally I think she'll probably come out all right on, you know, yeah. um, through, her, through her course work over the year and that. And uh, Joe, my son, just on his first year of A-levels. Um, so it's affected, you know, everyone really, yeah, yeah. you know, throughout. Um, but they're doing okay. I feel a bit sorry for them, to be honest. But Joe actually is, is stacking shelves in Tesco, so he's okay, really. Yeah, probably does yeah. 30, 30 hours a week, but um, Izzy's I don't know, she's a bit lost sometimes. You know, they've both got girlfriends and boyfriends, but she's doing okay. She started yeah. baking and that, you know, so she's doing <laughs> you're, all right. You're a happy so, man, then, hey, eh? you're a happy man, then, with all that baking going oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yes, <laughs> someone has to because Lara <laughs> didn't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's uh, yeah, they're all good, all good. yeah. Good. Um, I mean, the members will obviously be aware through updates that we've done that um, the team has, has been halved in size now. We've only got three three members of staff. Uh, we we followed three of them as part of the job retention scheme with the government just due to, to what was going on with the, with the virus. Um, and I think it's important to say, isn't it, at that point, that all the boys were in consultation with with you and, and with myself when it came to that decision. Uh, but obviously the boys who have, have been furloughed, so obviously Mel, Jeff and, and Tim, they're, they're doing okay? Yes, yeah, we, I, I try and, you know, get in contact with them, you know, at least once a week. Um, I know one or two are a bit bored, but, but, you know, one or two are a bit busy as well. So, but they're okay and health-wise, which is the main thing, they're, they're fine. Um, and they, you know, made made my decision a lot easier because I didn't actually go to bed the night before we had to make the decision, you know, um, of, of who we're going to furlough. But they made my life a lot easier. And I said that to them. And I really appreciate that as well. And for genuine reasons, you know, financial reasons as well. So that was good. But yeah, they're OK. They're OK. Good. Obviously, you got um, you got Paul and Reese alongside you the last four weeks. Yeah. Um, I know we yeah. speak pretty much every day, but uh, they seem they seem to be getting on with things really well. Yeah, it's it's, it's certainly different. Um, you know, it's pretty full on to be honest. And even though it's not, you know, growing or not the whole course is growing yet, but it's pretty full on, and time just absolutely flies. It's. Um, but they've they've been excellent, you know. It's they really have. I couldn't ask for anything more of them. So it's been, and and pleased overall with the condition. To be honest, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Good. And obviously for you as a, as a, as a manager of the team, and uh, it must be it must be quite strange for you managing a, a smaller team. What's been what's been the biggest challenges from from that point of view? Um. It's probably it's probably easier managing a smaller team to be honest, um, but I I don't know. We all sort of I mean I I previously I used to sort of just float around and grab a cup of coffee here and there, but this time round when there's just three of us, I sort of make a point of going back and having a coffee with them. I'll I'll sit outside the shed. Fortunately, the weather's okay, you know, and 
two of the boys will sit inside. So, but I think it's important just to, you know, with a small team, just to keep it as a team sort of thing. So it's, it's not changed a great deal. Um, you know, you don't see so many people and you, it's less sort of conversations, that sort of thing. But um, it's probably generally easier managing a smaller team, but obviously a lot more work to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay. And we all sort of chip in together and we know what's what. So it's, it's okay. Good. Good. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, mm. we obviously speak regularly and I think um, the golf course is a very different place, isn't it, at the moment? There's obviously, there's a few walkers yeah. out and about, which we'll discuss later on, but, um, you know, there's there's no members. But I think the first week you said to me, OK, this is, is not bad, but I think since then you've uh, you quite like the members back, as we all would. yeah. It's it was very very strange in recent Paul will say the same thing. It was initially it was quite eerie out there for the first week. It was really strange because you weren't getting the walkers either then mm. as well. So there's literally no no one on the course, and it was sort of quite lonely, which has probably made me go back and have a cup of tea with the boys. You know, wanted to talk to someone, but um, yeah, it was really strange. But I've sort of I'm going to be honest now. I've sort of got used to. Um, Golf does not being out there, although I still stand by it. I'd prefer to see them see them out there because I don't know, you put a lot of hard work in mm. and there's sort of no one to, you know, tell you that they appreciate it sort of thing. You get a lot of walkers saying that, mind you. Mm. Um, but it's it's definitely better with the golfers out there. But so much uh, you you get so much more done without the golfers there, you really mm. do. It's um it's, it's little things like, you know, if, if if there's a group going out at 10 o'clock religiously, we'll go out and try and do, you know, greens, tees, bunkers, holes, that sort of thing. And up until 10 o'clock, there's a dew, which means there's there's a mess if you're cutting. So it means one or two people clearing that mess up after. Mm. But now, the beauty of it, we can perhaps just leave things till the dew's gone and spread it over a couple of days. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe work, you know, from 10 o'clock onwards doing those sorts of things. But that's made made things a lot, lot easier. You know, you can almost account for no golfers being out there. It's like, you know, having two, two extra men sort of thing. Yeah. It's um, a, a lot easier. No, no downtime waiting for them to play. Um, but... You know, it's it's better overall with the members out there. Although yeah. I do see a lot of members, um, but um, I think the main thing is it's it's nice, you know, for them to come up and uh, say that they appreciate the course, and you just don't get that now after you've been putting those, um, you know, putting those hours in. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, but, no, I mean, uh, it's uh, like you, I think yeah, it's, it's, uh, we we want to see the members back on the course. Like you said, you work you work extremely hard to. To present the course in the, in the way that we we see it week in week out and and um you know the members you know, we know appreciate that and 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 i can't wait probably i would, I would hope to well we know chomping at the bit to get back and, and get on that golf course again um yeah so so yeah. while we're on while we're on the subject then of the golf course um obviously the members would have seen the updates the videos that you do obviously the photos that we've been sharing on social media and email as well to keep the members as informed as we can but um what's your sort of what are the key focuses at the moment and are you pleased with the sort of the condition of things yes it's um as, as you know by my videos it's you know we're still getting cold cold nights and once those cold nights disappear uh the soil temperatures remain consistent i mean it's um and then we'll start to see a lot of growth i mean um there's growth on the fairways semi rough that sort of thing tees are starting to kick in but greens are still a bit slow to to get going and you know they never really do up and, you know you're probably looking end of april early may till the greens start going that is a slight concern of mine because you know when we start mowing the greens daily and they'll need to be mown daily um it's it's you know equivalent to, to one man two days a week um when we've got the rough it's going to take three days to cut um might be a bit concerned then but the main thing is just presentation there's lots you know i'm driving around there's lots of things i see that need doing which isn't sort of 
uh, grass related, but I think, you know, you can't, you've got to basically cut the grass, you know, mm. to keep yeah. it presentable. And, and at the moment, I think it, it's looking really nice. And a lot of the walkers are saying that. Um, but it, it's just keeping, not letting things get in out of hand. And obviously green's priority uh, amongst anything. Um, you know, the difference is as well now, we're sort of basically mowing everything once a week and it yeah. looks okay. Uh, previously, we'd be mowing things two, three times a week and it would always look awesome, you know? It's, yeah. um, that, that is the difference. But as long as we keep on top of the things, and, and to this day, I, I'm more than happy with the condition out there. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, 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 it's the little things sometimes yeah. that you think, that you can afford to neglect to be honest it doesn't yeah. really matter yeah you know it's um, i think it's probably important for us to mention that we're following guidelines as well at the moment aren't we you know we've we've got um yeah. bigger bigger who are the governing body of obviously greenkeepers the pga to so the professional golfers association and some of the management organizations such as the golf Management association of europe they've got together and produced a document of essentially essential maintenance of a golf course haven't they and that's what we're following at the moment yeah very much so which which really means you know it's a it's a lot of mowing you know at the moment as we are doing the greens <clears throat> perhaps three times a week um you know and everything else is probably once a week yeah that's all we've got the time to do but it's 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 mowing basically that's that's what it's all about at this time yeah. and i know tomorrow we've got a lot of rain forecast so um, that will really kick things off but I'm not complaining because at the moment I'm doing quite a bit of watering so um, it'll save saves time on that as well you know so yeah yeah um, but yeah it's, it's important to follow the, the guidelines yeah <clears throat> so you mentioned there a few times obviously walkers on the golf course um, and uh, thanks to the members that have emailed in and obviously they're their main priority is looking after the golf course and, and I'm sure members won't understand if or what impact any walkers might be having. Obviously, we encourage them to, to stay around the periphery of the course as much as we can. But in your opinion, do you sort of, are, you, are, they, are they causing any, any potential problem, problems in your eyes? And, and how, what are we sort of doing to try and keep them informed, if you like? Yeah, not not at all. It's it's a pleasure to see them because I've not really I've seen one or two incidences, but um, generally it's it's actually quite nice to see them to be honest, and they're not doing any harm at all. Uh, there's there's one issue perhaps you see sort of families out there with um, young children who the first thing they do is they see a bunker and they think it's a sand pit, and they'll go and build sand castles in it, which can be a bit frustrating at times. In fact, I did actually have to say something to someone this afternoon about that, but I was um, pleasant about it and he, he totally understood and, and and that was fine. But no, not a problem. It's, it's actually nice to see people out there. So, yeah. But we have, um, you know, we've had no vandalism at all. Um, it, it's just the bunkers really, but you know, it's, it's it can't be helped and you know you feel for these people sometimes they want to be out there and yeah um sometimes it's nice to see them but we put signs out on every entrance now which has helped i think um you see a lot a lot of people on the perimeters of the course as well and almost scared to go onto the fairway and that you know yeah. so it's i think the signs have helped um but yeah. Everyone I've seen has been really pleasant, yeah. and, and no, I don't have a problem with it at all. Well, I told you your next job. Your next job is going to going to be to you're going to be my next uh, membership salesperson and sell some social memberships for me while they're wandering around the golf course. <laughs> uh, yeah. You see, you see a lot of people that never been there before. You know. Ooh, yeah, you and know, that, that could uh, be the knock on effect, I think, for the club. You know, that could could genuinely be something. You know, we are we are right in the middle of the community, aren't we? We're we're smack in the oh, middle yeah. of everything. Uh, Rad is a large community, mm. lots of kids, lots of families. And and I think this could have a positive um, spin on things when we get back to normal. Yeah, 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 hopefully. Um, mm. So coming into the last couple of questions then, um, the, the last main one, you know, what can the, what can the members expect then when they return? What's, uh, what can they expect to see? Well, I... I, I... I feel slightly the pressure's on a bit, but when they return, which is hopefully, you know, soon, um, 
I obviously obviously want it to be the best that they've seen it, you know. But it's it's going to be difficult with three of us. Um, but I can assure you that they they will be pleased. Um, but I think you do have to take into account that there are only three of us as well. Um, but um, I'm I'm sure that they'll be pleased. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Good. Yeah. Good. And certainly it'll be certainly different to when they last played, put it that way, <laughs> which yeah. is probably um, underwater. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But no, I, I'm sure that sure they'll be pleased. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I thought we'd do, a bit of fun towards the end, I thought we'd uh, we'd give members uh, the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. So I have got eight questions here. Um, I only mentioned to you literally just before we started recording this, so uh, put you under yeah, pressure a bit. That. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. first question: Your first job in greenkeeping, and when was it? That was at Bryn Hill Golf Club. Um, I was seventeen, uh, and I'm fifty-five now. So, work that one out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was, I was seventeen straight from school. I was selling deck chairs on Barry Island Beach initially, and uh, I was offered a job at Bryn Hill for the summer, and I just took to it like a duck to water. Loved yeah. it. Loved yeah. it. So uh, just went on from there, really. Okay, so you mentioned water there, so this will probably tie in quite nicely. Uh, Favourite thing to do outside of work? Surfing. Surfing, of course. You'll never <laughs> we'll find start. Julian too yeah. far away from a, a surfboard. Uh, that must be killing you at the moment because you can't do that either at the moment. Can yeah, you? it's difficult. I still look on the webcam as well and I can see the waves there and you just can't go in. It's... Yeah, you, you miss it because it's my yeah. little escape as well. I love yeah, it. Yeah, love yeah. it. So, yeah, uh, difficult. Like you guys missing golf, really, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Your favourite memory then at Radha? Oh, that wow. is putting you on the spot. Yeah. Favourite? I, I don't, probably don't have a favourite, to be honest. Um, I, I just get. You know, big tournaments, big events, you know, um, even club championships, you know, internal events. Um, my favourite thing is probably just saying that people enjoyed the course, you know, and thought mm. it's fantastic. So there's no special memory, I don't think. Um, there might be one or two which I can't really talk about. But um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just generally the... You know, seeing the members enjoying the course, really, I think, yeah. overall. Okay. Mm. Favourite hole on the golf course? I, there's a number, obviously, <coughs> the ninth in about two two weeks' time when the rhododendrons are out, and I keep sit thinking about that. Unfortunately, I don't think the members are going to see them this time. I'm not no. sure, but they'll, they'll, they'll be coming out soon. But the ninth is just so picturesque. Um, I love the fourth, not from a golfing point of view. I like standing just to the right of the third green, looking down at the fourth. I like the fifth tee, looking up. Thirteenth, I like. It's, it's all pretty. Scenic, you know, I'm not going to nail yeah. you down to one here, am I? No, no, I don't <laughs> think you are. To be honest, no, no. All right, I'll let you off on that one then. Uh, yeah. What's your favourite football team? Tottenham. Okay. Just leave it there, shall Just we? leave that there. Yeah. We'll mention <laughs> yeah. following or, or anything like that. With, no, uh, no. Beer or wine? They're both really, Sue. I sometimes like a Stella, sometimes like a, a white wine. So it depends on mood I'm in. <laughs> Favourite food? My daughter does a lovely beans on toast with grated cheese on the top, and it's always a winner. Very nice, very nice. Always. Uh, and your last always. one, favourite course other than Radha, obviously. Well, it's got to be one by the sea, and I tend to look at Porth Call a lot whilst I'm in the water, so I'd probably say Porth Call. <laughs> good, good shout, good shout. Okay, well, that, that comes to the end of that. I mean, um, I think it goes out saying to you, you know, we, as I said, we talk all the time, but you know, thanks to you, you, uh, you guys for all the work you're putting in in this this difficult time, it's uh, it's not easy at the moment, and I know the the course will be in a in a great position when we when we get back to. 
to play in whenever that might be. Obviously, we've just been told we've got another three weeks of of lockdown. Uh, but you know, hopefully, it won't be too soon after that that we see some golf again. But um, you know, keep up the good work. I'm sure that's the same sentiment from all the members. Um, and hopefully, we'll be seeing you. Or they they'll all be seeing you soon. Yeah, sure. Thanks to you as well, Sue, for just uh, you know steering the ship um, and he's doing a good job it's all um, I don't know it's just it's all okay at the moment you know yeah touch wood touch wood but uh, yeah thanks yeah. you okay mate I'll, uh, we'll catch up soon okay cheers you